Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here and welcome to my overview of the story for patch 2.5 before the fall. This video covers part 1 of the story that was released on January 20th, 2015. Part 2 will be released late March of 2015 and the video with that story will come shortly after. The story continues where we left off in patch 2.4 with Minfilia pondering over the expansion of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. While she is weary of all the responsibilities the group has taken on since its inception, Alfino is confident that the moves they've made, including creating the Crystal Braves, have been the right decisions. With that in mind, he wishes to aid Uldah in regaining its political stability. Riol, one of Alfino's subordinates, has tracked down the source of the weapons used by the refugees to a black marketeer. In an attempt to stop his business, Ilbert asks for your help. However, the situation ends in the Marketeer being killed by one of the Crystal Braves, and the supposedly large weapon shipment actually ends up only being a single crate. To top it all off, several Dusk White Sellswords escape the conflict. While Ilbird pursues them, you deliver the crate back to Yu Yu Hase in Ulda. Riola is convinced that something isn't right. He claims with absolute certainty that there must have been more weapons in the exchange. However, you cannot dwell on the thought as Tataru requests their return to Mordona to meet with a special representative of Ishgard. Sir Amaric's second-in-command Lucia awaits you and claims that there is an increasing fear that Midgard Somer will be resurrected soon. She requests that they check on what remains of the Agrius to determine if anything is amiss. After climbing the fallen airship battling beasts and Imperial alike, you arrive at the top to discover that Midgard Somer has indeed been revived, or at least woken from a long slumber. After defeating the Wyrmlord, he asks that you plead your case. However, despite what you have to say, he tells you that Ishgard will burn and even considers killing you where you stand. However, he notices that Heidelin's blessing is protecting you, and it makes him second guess his decision. Instead, he not only strips you of her blessing, but forms a covenant with you himself. As a part of this covenant, a small wyvern carrying Midgard Somer's essence appears briefly. Though it disappears, this covenant gives Midgard Salmer eyes over your every action. You return to the Rising Stones and tell the Scions of these events. They tell you to keep most of the conversation a secret as to not upset the Ishgardians and make them believe that you are actually working with the Dravanians. While Alfino informs Lucy of the events, you tell Minfilia that Midgard Salmer stripped you of Heidelin's blessing. Despite this, the meeting ends accordingly. Alfino is unsure if Ishgard can defend against the impending assault, but ultimately decides they can't intervene unless Ishgard asks for assistance first. Shortly after this, Moonbreeder requests a meeting with the Scions in order to share with them a method of creating the Weapon of Light to defeat the Asians. She has created a siphon that will allow them to tap into distant corrupted crystals and forge a blade of light anytime, anywhere they need it. For the first test, Alfino requests she tries Northern Thanalin due to the corrupted crystals mostly being mildly sized and spaced apart in case of any errors. While there, he also requests that you defend the Cerulean Processing Plant from Imperial forces of the 14th Legion who are trying desperately to survive without the Empire's backing. After removing some explosives from the plant and defeating several Imperial parties, you finally join Moonbrita at Dalamud's Talon, a corrupted crystal patch just north of the processing plant. Moonbrita tests the siphon to much success while talking about her childhood with Louis Swa and Urian J. Shortly after the successful test, an Asian man by the name of Nabrialis appears to talk with the adventurer. During this encounter, he discovers that you have lost the blessing of the light and that the quote-unquote seal is broken. Without your blessing, he can acquire a powerful staff and become the strongest Asian under Lord Zodiark. He vanishes back into the dark rift, leaving you to ponder his words. Moonbrita comes to the conclusion that the staff he is talking about is actually Tup Samadhi, Louis Swa's staff that was being kept at the Rising Stones. Moonbrita and yourself make to the Rising Stones with great haste. You barge into Minfilia's chambers to discover her tightly holding Tup Samadhi while Nabrialis demands that she hand it over. He explains that while the adventurer had the blessing of light, there was a seal on the Rising Stones that prevented most Asians from entering. Without it though, he can come and go as he pleases. As for why he wants Tup Samadhi, the staff holds the ability to draw ether from its surroundings directly due to the tablets that are attached to it. This is how Louis Swa was able to summon the Twelve without crystals to sacrifice. With all the pieces in place, Nabrialis plans to bring about the next rejoining and summon Lord Zodiark with it. Minfilia, unwilling to part with the staff, is taken into the realm between the worlds where the Asians live. 
Munbrita had tried to stop Nabrialis sooner, but was badly wounded by a laser of darkness through her body. The adventurer follows Nabrialis in her stead and saves Minfilia from her capture. Upon returning to the Rising Stones, Nabrialis begins forming his new body with the ether left over from his old one. He ensures that he will return to take Tupsamati sooner or later. Munbrita is unwilling to let him go, and gives Minfilia a chunk of white orosite to imprison him. After capturing him in the orosite, you use Tupsamati and the siphon in an attempt to slay the Asian for good, the ultimate test of Munbrita's theory. However, the siphon is unable to gather enough ether to slay Nabrialis, and he begins to gain more and more power. With no other choice, Moonbrita sacrifices her life and her body's ether to give the Weapon of Light enough power to kill the Asian once and for all. Her plan is a success, and Nabrialis is killed. The rest of the Scions are told of Moonbrita's sacrifice shortly after. While they are all in shock, Urianjay's heart is broken at the loss of his childhood friend. The adventurer assures him that she understood Louisois' reason for leaving her when she was younger to come and save Eorzea, despite being looked at as a complete disappointment by the standard of Charlayan. Urianjay takes pleasure in knowing that Moonbrita's spirit will rest in peace, and tells the Scions that he will mourn her in the Waking Sands. Now the Scions have a means with which to actually kill Asians, though it did take the sacrifice of a life to gain the proper power. Will future Asians require the same sacrifice? In one final moment, the Scions all pay their respect to Moonbrita at Wrath of Frost in Mordona. Midgrisomer decides to appear and tell the adventurer that death for life is a fair trade, and that many more bargains will be struck. With these few words, he disappears and the Scions return to their duty. And that's the conclusion for part one of the Before the Fall main story. There's a lot of interesting things in here, and it was one of the best stories they've had so far. I'm mostly interested to see, when we go to kill the other Asians, if there are going to be more Scions sacrificing their lives, or anyone else in general sacrificing their lives, in order to ensure that enough ether is there. Moonbrita built that device, the Siphon, and it wasn't strong enough. The question is, will Urdian J or any of the other Scions, or anyone really in contact with the Scions, be able to strengthen it enough to the point where that is not an issue? Hopefully, we find out more answers to this in the future, on top of dealing with the Dravanian threat in Before the Fall Part 2 coming at the end of March. But anyway, thank you for watching this video. I will see you guys in the next one, and until then, take care.